All right guys, today we are talking about sensory bins. I cannot wait to show you guys the six sensory bins that I put together for the kids. I wanted to show you guys that in terms of sensory bins, like you see them all over Pinterest, you see them on Instagram sometimes too. They're a great way to entertain your kids, but I don't know, sometimes the ones that you see like are very complicated or you think maybe they're too, there's too much involved in order to get them set up or they're too expensive, all of that. So I wanted to show you guys that you can make these very affordably. Everything that I got here um, for the bins was for the most part from the Dollar Tree. So very affordable and not complicated because if it was complicated, I wouldn't have made it because I am very far from a Pinterest mom. I've never been like a crafty person. So this is like just very simple stuff. I literally went with the kids to Dollar Tree one afternoon and picked up all of these things and then came home and put them together. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video. If you do happen to be new here, I'd love it if you stick around. My name is Kayla. I'm a mom of two. I have Riley who's three and a half and Jackson who's one and a half and I'm literally just always trying to find ways to entertain them because I'm home with them and I need new things to do with them. So I hope you guys enjoy it. We'll walk you through everything and yeah, if you do like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you're new and let's just get into the bins. All right, so starting off with the first bin that I put together, this is one that I thought Riley would really like. The bins themselves, I'll tell you, I got from Target. I just had them in the basement, but I'm sure that Dollar Tree has similar ones. And then everything else that you see here on the table is from Dollar Tree. I was looking for anything like tiny little gemstones, things that Riley could dig up. I also found this really pretty purple sand that I thought she would like. So then this is how I put it together. I literally took the bin, put it on the table and then I opened up the sand. I think I went with what, three bags of this sand or two bags and again, everything was from the Dollar Tree. So like an entire sensory bin didn't cost more than like five or six dollars. So like you can see Riley was like already digging the sand. I knew that the colored sand would be a hit and then I took these like little gemstones and I threw them in there. They also had some red ones. Like you just have to go to like the craft section go to where they have like the florals, the craft sections, and you can find like little things like this. And then what else did I add in here? I added the little unicorns that I believe were in the toy section. They have all kinds of like little mini toys that you can put in sensory bins. They have like army figures if you have a little boy that maybe wants to play with army figures. Just look for anything teeny tiny. I ended up taking some of those unicorns out of there afterwards because it was like a little bit too cluttered. And then the other thing that I did is whenever I make these sensory bins, I like to have some kind of a container or something that Riley and Jackson, like they can transfer the sand into the container. So whether that's like a little cup or something that they can scoop things and put it into. So that's why I got this little wooden crate. And then in the like utensils area where they have the kitchen stuff, they had these spatulas. So I just grabbed them and I like the color. Um, I thought Riley would like those and they're silicone. So they're just easy for her to grab and then she can dig and play with the stuff. And then all I would do for the most part with the bins is I would put them in front of the kids and then just let them do their thing. Like sometimes I would show them like, oh look, you can scoop things and put it in here. But for the most part, the point of the sensory bins is just to give them an opportunity to be creative, to use their imagination and to play with it as they see fit. The one thing I will tell you with a lot of these is that um, if you are gonna put it like on a table like this, I put this on my kitchen table, it might be smart to put like some kind of a sheet or something under. I'm not gonna tell you that these were not super messy because there's toddlers playing with them. So especially if you're like not watching them 24 seven, there could be sand on the table and stuff. With some of the bins, I also ended up like putting them outside when we would play with them because again, I didn't want too much of a mess inside, but your level of mess is yours to decide but this is one that Riley really enjoyed. We'll get into the next one in just a second, but I do want to tell you that if you're not into making these, um, they do sell bins like that are sensory bins that you can buy already pre-made. Like we were at Michael's this past weekend and they have some. I'll link them down below in the description box in case you're just like, you know what? Like this is great in theory, but I can't do it. They do have some, but you're going to pay more money for them. I think some of the ones that I saw were like 15 or 16 bucks, whereas I was able to make some way cheaper than that, but I know it's not everybody's jam. So just so you know, you can't buy them pre-made. So yeah, I'll let you guys just watch Riley really quick um, so that you can see her playing with it. And just know like this was something that kept her entertained, you guys. I kid you not, this first bin kept her entertained for like an hour. She was separating the gems, taking them all out of the um, the sand, and then she was putting the sand in the different containers. So this is definitely the kind of thing that I keep. Um, I keep them like in the garage, and then whenever I feel like 
I need something different to entertain them, then I'll pull out one of these bins and she loves them. <laughs> What are you doing? You're taking out the unicorns? Yes, I'm taking out the unicorns. So you can just dig the gems? Yes, I can just dig the gems. Well, I can just dig the gems. To with the spectra lock. <laughs> you can use a scooper too. gems do you find? I don't know. It's a lot of gems. They're beautiful. So the next bin is one that I kind of thought like my vision was like fairy garden um so i found like these little green rocks at the dollar tree i also found like some flower pots the little figurines that you'll see on the table i did already have so i found like her princess like fairy kind of little figurines which again if you have any figurines you can use them or you can find some on amazon um like of the princesses we just always have them here at home and then another thing that i found that i thought was um fun to put in there was like these little flowers from like the party favors section so that's something else that we ended up throwing in there again go like search the entire dollar tree they have plenty of things that you can add in the sensory bins i got some like fake moss so then i started just kind of playing around with it and assembling it experimenting like i did like the green sand or the green little rocks but then when i went to put in like the moss the moss was very messy so I ended up putting just a little bit of it, but that wasn't like my favorite thing. So I probably wouldn't do that again in the future. And then after that was in like the fillers, then I just added the little figurines. I added the flower pot, which I thought was good because that's like the little cup that she can put stuff in. I added a couple unicorns and then anything like a measuring cup or um, these little tongs, those are great for them to like, you know, grab the fillers with and transfer things. So you can literally like look inside of your kitchen and see what you have that might work for sensory bins like this. Again, it does not have to be fancy. It does not have to cost a fortune. And then like the toddlers, like they go crazy for this kind of stuff. So again, here's Riley playing with it. The novelty, honestly, like the fact that it's something new is something that just gets her so excited and she loved the little rings sometimes like the thing that you don't expect them to like the most is what they're fascinated with like I could have honestly just given her those rings and she would have had the best time playing with them but then as time went on then she started thinking like oh look I can put this unicorn in there or you know she started transferring the rocks and just coming up with new ways to play with it and that's kind of the cool thing about sensory bins that they might play with it one way the first time, you put away the bin, and then the next time you pull it out, then they play with it in some different way. So that was also a hit. Jackson eventually also joined the party and he loved putting the little rocks inside of the different cups. Again, I still do keep an eye on him when he's playing with these because I don't want him to put stuff in his mouth, but he's been so much better lately about that where I'm not like paranoid that he's going to be eating the rocks. Eventually too, like Riley was playing with Play-Doh at one point and then she ended up putting the little flowers in the Play-Doh. So there's all kinds of ways that these sensory bins can be enjoyed. All right, so we'll move on to one that I did for Jackson and Riley likes this one too, but it's more boy themed, right? So again, this is all stuff that I got at the Dollar Tree. I was looking for black beans because I wanted it to be like, you know, like dirt, but they didn't have black beans. So I just got some dry pinto beans and then they sell these little packs of Legos at the Dollar Tree too that are just a dollar. Um, so I thought those would be fun. Some construction toys from the little toy section, some craft sticks, little spatulas that I also found in the toy section, and then another one of those silicone spoons for him to grab everything. So I just opened up the pinto beans and threw them right in there. I did end up using the two bags, but again, you could use as many as you think. And then this kind of looks like rocks. It kind of looks like dirt. I mean, again, you've got to use your imagination here, 
but it was a hit you guys are gonna see like he loved this and then I just added the craft sticks. I figured with the craft sticks, maybe he could like build a track or he could build a little house. Um, just something that they can kind of fidget with and find ways to play with it. And then I put the little construction toys, the cars, you know, Jackson loves that kind of stuff. And then the scoopers. And then this is what it looked like. I thought that this was so cute, you guys. Like this is one of my favorite ones that I put together. And I had no like vision at the beginning i just literally went to the dollar tree and was like okay this might go with this this kind of would work and then you start putting it together and i feel like the more that you do that the better you'll get at them like even joe <laughs> loved this one it was so funny like they all like were here in the kitchen and they were playing with it and then joe was showing jackson how to put like the little beans inside of the construction toy and it was just fun to see like everybody play with it in their own different way and then at one point even like joe was making like a little house he was trying to make like a little teepee thing a little i don't know a little house with the um craft stick so that's what's kind of cool about the sensory bins and again that sensory bin probably costs like six or seven dollars to make so definitely recommend that all right so the next one that we have here is kind of like an underwater themed one i found these little um vase fillers i guess is what you consider them i think again they were like in the crafts the floral section and they're like these little gemstone things that normally people would put in vases but we're making it like the water and the underwater theme. So I got that. I got some of the other figurines that Riley had that she's had forever. And then I found some pearls that I thought might be cool to mix in there. And then just a random spoon from Riley's um, kitchen that she has. And like a little cup, a little plastic cup also from the Dollar Tree. And then I had this random pineapple that I was like, maybe I'll put it in there and she'll be excited. Like I'll tell her that it's SpongeBob's house and she'll think that it's cool. So all I did then was put all the beads and then I got the pearls because I wanted for there to be like an element to the sensory bin where she could like sort out the pearls from the blue gems or the blue beads, whatever you want to call them. So that's why I added like the extra component to that. And eventually that is one of the things that she did with them, but they look so freaking pretty. They look really pretty. And then again, like I did with all of them, I try to find a place where she can like scoop things and I'm just playing around with what can be used to put things into. So I think I ended up just using the pineapple cup, which opens up and then I put her little underwater uh, little figurines. And then that was it. Like that one was not expensive at all. You can throw in like little rubber duckies in here. You can throw in little rubber frogs. Those I saw at the Dollar Tree and just let them play and let them be creative and come up with different ways to play with it. Riley ended up really liking this one um, and then she figured out that she could open up the pineapple cup. I think at one point she did ask for another cup and then she was again sorting out the pearls from the water so again that one was one that we enjoyed the next one is one that i had wanted to try i didn't know if it was going to work or not but i had seen a lot of people that have used um like cheerios or some kind of cereal as sand because like if you don't have like play sand and you want to add sand to one of the sensory bins a lot of people have used like just taking some cereal blending it in like a food processor or in like a little blender and then the little grains the little granules whatever that becomes the sand so i got a box of cheerios at the dollar tree and i tried to make that happen here so you guys are gonna see how i do that in just a second but then other things that i got from the dollar tree was just like again other little utensils a little um bottle of seashells that i thought would go well with like the pretend sand and then some rubies so this is like a pirate's treasure kind of box and then i got the little coins from the favors area so that was like my theme with this one so to do the sand i grabbed the blend jet that i had and i added the cheerios this isn't the best way to blend them because like the blend jet i had to use it like several times like i think it would have been faster had i used just a regular blender but it did work you guys so you just Put the cereal in there and blend it i guess it doesn't have to be cheerios i'm sure if you had any other cereal i'm sure it would work just as fine but when you do blend it enough it becomes like a sand like texture so i just did it over and over again until i got enough sand and then once i thought i had enough sand i poured it into the bin i think i had to repeat that process just a few times but eventually we got sand and i didn't use more than a box so you probably only need like a box and then I started just adding all of the different 
things that go in the bin and Riley loved this one I mean she wanted to play with the seashells she thought finding the gems and like the buried treasure was so fun so it's really cool that with just like that one Dollar Tree shopping trip like I got hours of entertainment with these bins so again I'll let you guys just kind of watch her and see like all the different ways that she was playing with it she would kind of like sift through the sand and like find the coins and put them in the cup so this is helping her a lot with like her motor skills and with just her imagination it's the kind of pretend play that she enjoys doing by herself and she's not asking me a million times to play with her so that is a win for me and then at one point here Jackson also liked this bin so I put it outside for him and he loved finding the little seashells and putting them in the seashell container so both of them have really enjoyed the bins and that makes me a happy camper so now now that you've seen a few of the bins um if you for any reason think like that's even too difficult or you're like i don't have time for that or whatever the next one that i'm going to show you is literally as simple as easy as it gets this is a very easy fun activity for them that also kind of incorporates the sensory bin activity so literally just go to the dollar tree or go to any grocery store and get a box of fruit loops um these are fruit rings because i got them at the dollar tree and get some pipe cleaners and literally just throw the fruit loops in a shoe bin a shoe box whatever bin you have so that's kind of what i did here i also added a couple things that i thought might work i got like these little cupcake uh whatever you call them the cupcake liners i also had some uh, abc magnets because i thought that we could add the magnets into the fruit loops and kind of making it a scooping adventure and while riley's scooping through the fruit loops we could also work on different letters like that's like a more educational component of it but if not just add fruit loops in a bin and give them the pipe cleaners give them a scooper so the thought here was that she could scoop the fruit loops um just do the scooping thing or she could sort the different colored fruit loops and put them each in a different like cupcake liner like i could have one little cupcake liner full of all the green fruit loops and have her do that sorting activity or with the pipe cleaner she could also do that and string the fruit loops through the pipe cleaners she could make necklaces she could do whatever it is that she wanted to do so that's what the bin looked like and that one was so simple so she loved it at first she started like scooping things and then i was showing her how to make like bracelets or necklaces whatever just stringing the fruit loops through and she didn't really want to pay attention to the instructions like i was telling her grab all of the fruit loops of the same color as the pipe cleaner she just said rainbow and she wanted to just do a rainbow you know kind of bracelet and that's fine because she was just practicing stringing through the fruit loops and then jackson of course came and all he wanted to do is eat the fruit loops so that was fine because that's the kind of sensory bin that he can play with and i don't have to be worried so much that he's gonna eat things that he's not supposed to the fruit loops were fine for him to eat so yeah i think that was probably jackson's favorite bin so the kids were able to play with that one and again, it doesn't get any easier than that. Just something different to keep them entertained. That's honestly the biggest thing with the sensory bins, you guys. Like, even if you have no imagination, okay? Like, let's say you're not creative at all. I wouldn't consider myself someone that does this kind of stuff, right? Like, again, I'm not a Pinterest mom. I don't go on to Pinterest five times a day to look for activities. Like, I'm usually very overwhelmed by that kind of stuff. I like easy things that I can throw together and be done with and they play with. And that's what I feel like I was able to do with these bins. I'm telling you, if I did it, you guys can do it. But the biggest thing with the sensory bins is honestly just that you're doing something different. Something out of the ordinary. They have their normal toys that they play with. You're doing something new. And that newness factor for toddlers I have found in my experience of being a mom for almost four years. That's really all that they're looking for. What is that? Is that a worm or is that a bracelet? That's a worm bracelet. A worm? Can I make another bracelet? Yeah, sure. I can make it like, like a twisty. I need to make it like a twisty. Okay. Yeah. 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 You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. You're welcome. Something that I had done for a long time, I'm sure you guys have seen them in my vlogs and stuff, is I've had like this really long bin that I have filled with play sand. The play sand that we use, I'll link down below too for you guys because I get questions about that a lot. 
but those long bins I literally just fill it with sand and then I'll throw in just different cups and different beakers like different toys that they've accumulated throughout the years um, anything that they can transfer the sand with like literally teacups from other Riley's toys of like tea parties and stuff and they will play with that bin of sand for the longest time so you could obviously do something like that too um but this was just a way for me to kind of come up with like some more themed ideas and i think that it was a hit so what's great about how i did these bins is that since they're in shoe boxes like i've been able to save these and they're all stacked up in my garage and now whenever i feel like the kids are bored or whatever i can pull out one of these and they can play with it. The ones that have like the edible foods and stuff, I definitely wanna make sure that like the Fruit Loops are not super stale and then Jackson's trying to eat them. And the sand too, I'm not sure like how much, like how long the Cheerios will hold up because you know, it's food. So I can't just have it sitting there for a long time. But the other ones, like any of the ones that had the sand or the rocks, like that's done. And I can just literally pull it out and open it and have them play with it again. So I'm getting several uses out of it, which I think is great. But that is it. That is it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope that gave you some inspiration in the world of sensory bins. If you wanna see me do more of these, let me know because I would have so much fun just putting some more together. I have a few other ideas of bins that I would like to do for the kids. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you guys are here for this kind of stuff. But thank you for watching. Like always, I love your freaking faces. I love you to pieces. Again, if you are new, if you stumbled across this video, stick around, subscribe, be my friend. I do a lot of motherhood content. I do a lot of like vlogs and just hanging out with me and the kids at home, just trying to not go crazy. So I would love to have you here and that's it. So again, one more time, thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.